Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, right now it is just starting to get cold over here in Chicago and as a result the down badness is hitting me like a truck. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to persevere through it and talk about some graph databases. So let's get into things. Alrighty, so today's video is all about graph databases, which as you may have guessed, are specifically useful for holding, storing, and reading and writing quickly graph data. So graph data is anything that is best represented by a bunch of nodes and vertices or edges, whatever you want to call them. And as you can see, I have presented one here below, where even things like the edges themselves can have values, the nodes themselves can have keys and or values. And in particular, this graph is going to represent uh, who is trying to flirt with who. As you can see, it's a directed graph. So you've got Megan Fox and Kate Upton over here trying to flirt with Jordan, unsurprising. And then you've got a few uh, bozo celebrities trying to flirt with them, but uh, you know they're not really reciprocating that. So you've got Shia LaBeouf, Machine Gun Kelly, of course, going to shoot his shot with both, and then Justin Verlander, who, to my disappointment, is actually now married to Kate Upton. So the graph database video itself is mostly inspired by Neo4j, which we'll talk about towards the end of this one, but for now, let's think about this a little bit more abstractly. So I'm going to start the video itself by basically covering the concept of native versus non-native graph databases. Now the meaning of that effectively is that a non-native graph database is one that takes a typical existing database and basically writes a query language on top of it such that you can perform graph traversals relatively easily. So let's see how we would actually perform something like a graph traversal using a relational database. So keep in mind with a relational database, whenever we have many to many relationships like we require in a graph, we would typically use a table that basically just has the primary keys of the nodes that you're joining, and that would indicate an edge. So again, here's our people table over here on the left. We've got all of our lovely characters. And then, of course, we've got our flirting table with a from and a to column. Now keep in mind, to keep this thing as fast as possible, we probably want to put an index on the from column, and then we also want to put an index on our ID column so we can find people as quickly as possible. So why is it that this implementation of a graph is a little bit less than ideal? Well, let's try and demonstrate that by answering the question, who has Machine Gun Kelly hit on? So first, by doing this, we would start by finding Machine Gun Kelly. So that is going to be node with ID number five. And then we would check out our flirting table. So the first thing we would have to do is because this is an index, we have to binary search it. So we binary search it, and we end up seeing that he's flirted with people two and person three. And basically from there, now we have to go back to our people table and binary search that. And we can see that eventually he's flirted with Megan Fox and Kate Upton, as was the case in our original graph. That's basically what we're gonna be relying on for the rest of this video. There are a couple of problems with that though. It takes a lot of time to actually find that result. For starters, in order to find you know, the primary keys of who he flirted with, that is a logarithmic operation relative to the number of edges in our graph and to actually go ahead and then take those kind of primary keys and get the people from them, that is a logarithmic operation uh, relative to the number of people or nodes in our graph. And so as a result of that, that is going to be pretty slow. When we think of a graph, typically when we have an edge, we can just jump to the other node, right? We can do it in uh, basically constant time complexity. And so using a relational database to build a graph probably isn't your best idea. It shouldn't be the case that as we add more nodes to the graph, it literally gets slower to traverse. That shouldn't really matter at all. Okay, so let's think about a non-relational implementation of a graph. This could be a little bit better. So as you can see, since we have more data locality, since we don't have a set of a structure, we can actually just have a field that's a list and it stores the IDs of the people that we've hit on. So again, let's use Machine Gun Kelly as our example. So we can see pretty easily right off the bat, due to our great data locality, that he's hit on people two and three. So we don't have to go to another table and do a binary search. So we got rid of you know, scaling our complexity due to the number of edges. However, in this case, we still do have to take two and take three and do a binary search over here in order to find them. And so it's still becoming more and more expensive to traverse our graph as the number of nodes in our graph increases. Like I mentioned, this is the size of the nodes. And so as a result of that, again, just not an ideal implementation. Now you may say to yourself, well, oh, you know, like, couldn't we just go right back to Megan Fox over here? Couldn't we go right back to Kate Upton over here? Yeah, we could. 
but uh, keep in mind that they also have edges. And as a result, if we wanted to store the actual full node and do traversals, we would potentially be just duplicating our graph n times over. It could be very, very bad storage wise. So let's now talk about the last piece of this video, the last piece of our puzzle, which is going to be the native implementation or basically what Neo4j does, which is why it is so popular as a graph database. So as you can see right here, we've got a couple of unique fields. We've got an address field, which is representing basically the address of this thing on disk or in memory, whichever you wanna use. And then additionally, we've also got a nodes and an edges table. So the edges themselves are effectively objects in our database. So as you can see, for every single person, we've got a pointer in the database to an edge address. And what that's going to do is then actually point us right over here to our edges table where it's corresponding. And then our edge in turn is going to point right back to the original node. And what that does is instead of having to actually just binary search our index over and over and over again, we can just jump to the proper place on disk. Now do keep in mind that disks, generally speaking, are meant for sequential access. They're not really meant for random accesses. However, if you can save this much time complexity, it's still going to make a super significant difference. So another thing you may note that's actually kind of interesting is for MGK, for example, recall that he's got multiple edges and meanwhile, there's only one address for him. The reason for that being that that's what this next address field is doing over here. So if we go to the edge that is at the address uh, 10, we can see that it's pointing to node two. So that's pointing back to Megan Fox. However, at the same time, it also points to the next edge right here, so that if we're trying to traverse all of Machine Gun Kelly's nodes, or the ones that it points to, we can go quickly from this edge to this edge over here, see that it's pointing to the thing at address three, and then jump right back to see that Machine Gun Kelly is also hitting on Kate Upton. Now, the really nice thing about this, like I mentioned, is it is constant time complexity. We're just jumping around. We don't have to loop through the number of nodes every single time. The amount of computation that we have to do does not scale relative to the number of nodes or edges in our graph. And so as a result, this thing is a lot more efficient. The term that Neo4j officially uses for it is called index-free adjacency because we don't have to use an index. It speeds things up pretty considerably. Okay. So the last kind of point to make over here is that in Neo4j in particular, we have a lot of ACID transactions that we need to make. The reason being that a lot of times there are operations that we may want to basically perform them on multiple nodes that are connected to one another. For example, let's say we said, take this node here and every single node that's connected to it, add three. So that would look like this right here. And it's important that all of these operations go through or they all fail, or uh, just in general, we want them to be atomic. So of course, for doing something like this, it would be the same as our other ACID transactions in normal databases. We need a write ahead log, we need to put locks on all of those nodes so we don't incur any race conditions, and as a result, of course, that can slow things down. An even more pro uh, problematic scenario is going to be when these things are distributed across different partitions of the graph. So as you can see, if I wanna add three to all of these nodes over here, here, and here, they're physically on different computers. And unfortunately, what that does mean is that we're gonna to have to run a two-phase commit. The nice thing that Neo4j does do for us is it'll basically say, okay, well, it's only these three nodes involved in the two-phase commit. So let's make this guy the coordinator. And these two are listening basically to the two-phase commit. And then this fourth node over here, we don't really have to worry about that. It can proceed as normal. Proceed as normal. And that is obviously going to be super useful because if every single node was involved in the two-phase commit, then our entire system would basically have to wait while that write went through. So in conclusion, graph databases are probably not going to come up too much in your system design interviews, and frankly, probably not even that much in your career either. But not only is it an interesting topic, but if they do ever come up, you're going to want to know why native graph databases are a lot quicker and a lot better, and of course, why that is. Anyways, guys, hope this video was useful and I will see you in the next one.